I think in terms of the connection to literacy um, and numeracy, there, there are direct connections. Um, always looking for ways to improve First Nations, Métis, Inuit educational successes, especially making it meaningful for those Aboriginal students. If it's not meaningful, if there's no connection, then it just makes it more difficult to engage and inspire the child. One of the big things here for our students at uh, Wigstone Cree Nation is today's a day they can go out on the land, um, play, learn games from other different uh, tribes, different uh, nations. And instead of being in the classroom, they get to be out there. It's experiential, it's a lot more hands-on. And I know it feeds their spirit. Traditional Games Day um, provides a lot of connections to numeracy. For example, some of our students have used the game Run and Scream, which is a game where you just hold your breath and you run as long as you can, and then where you have pause to take another breath, that's your marker. They've used it to convert kilometers to meters to centimeters and millimeters as part of that, like so they'll say, okay, this is how many meters they went, how many centimeters is that? In many cases, I believe the students would uh, not be even aware of doing the math while they're participating uh, in one of the more authentic traditional games. Today's traditional games are a great opportunity for the children to learn how to count and how to measure. With the double ball, I know it's going by points, so you're adding. The team actually has to keep up with how many um, points, so it's adding and it's great for the younger ones because you know they're doing a three plus two or three plus three, so now we have six points. How we link some of the um, traditional games to numeracy, um, certainly um, at the grade seven curriculum this year, so they're learning about circles this year and a lot of the games involve um, implements that are either straight lines or circular. Um, so we can tie in our learning about circles with the constructing of some of the equipment. I think um, having our traditional games is a fun way to teach math in a different way. Instead of having to sit there writing with a piece of paper and um, counting your numbers there, you can take out your, um, your students out for a, a game. It's just a fun way to learn you're um, counting um, by actually playing and having fun with your group of friends. The elders that are there, they love watching the games that the kids are playing because it brings back like when they were young and the games that they played. So, And my mom is actually one of the ones that um, goes and helps out. She's one of the elders that um, does a station there. So I know like, you know, she, she just loves to um, to watch when I'm doing um, teaching the kids the traditional games because it's something that she used to do. I think it's important for the students in terms of um, connecting with their culture and it also teaches them um, m less about competition, more about skill development, more about fair play. I think that it's important for um, my students here who are all First Nations students in my class to be able to actually visualize and touch the things they are learning. Okay? I think that's so important for them because something seems to click when they're doing that. As opposed to a tr more of a traditional teaching where they're, they're sitting watching the blackboard, watching the smart board. Um, if they're engaged, once you have them engaged, I find that I really, really am able to have them. And uh, the learning just has skyrocketed. I think it's very, very important, again, not only in the area of literacy and numeracy, but in this whole educational context altogether, for schools, for educational leaders, for school districts to be inclusive of First Nations, Métis, Inuit parents and the community. 